Nissan has just unveiled the brand new 2024 Nissan Z Nismo. They actually unveiled it pretty much a couple of weeks ago when they released this teaser video which actually showed the entire car. But now we have all the information about this car right here. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to let you know what I think about the changes made to the Nismo version compared to the normal Nissan Z. We're going to have a look at the front side rear interior and I'm also going to show you my absolute my top favorite version of the Nissan Z that is actually in production right now as well which is none of the Nissan Z or the Nismo version. It's a completely different version that we have. First of all, let's have a look at this article from Car and Driver. I'm going to link this down in the description. So with 420 horsepower and 384 pound-feet of torque, the Z Nismo is the most powerful in the current Z cars, which is pretty obvious, I would say. There is no manual for the Nismo, but a retuned 9-speed automatic transmission and a track mode for faster shifts. And they talk more about this later in the uh, article here. And I'm not sure what I think about that, to be honest. The Z Nismo is a step up from the Z performance trim. You, uh, you have a redesigned bodywork, beefier wheels, and more horsepower from the twin turbo 3 liter V6. You have 20 extra horses and 34 more pound feet of torque over the standard Z. You also have a bigger oil cooler to keep this cool on the track for a long time. It comes with, so here, this is uh, what I'm talking about with, with this new gearbox. Not sure about this. It comes with Nismo only clutch packs and retuned engine management software so downshifts are nearly twice as fast and launch control is more aggressive at the start sounds all good so far there's also a sport plus though driving mode designed to be quick enough on the downshifts that the driver doesn't even have to use the paddles but i want to use the paddles when i'm downshifting even though it might be i don't know how many milliseconds slower than the software doing it for me, but specifically in an ISMO, I want to be in control. If I can't have a manual proper six-speed transmission, at least give me the option to downshift manually, which they do, but just the fact that they have an option that they that the software downshifts for you, not a huge fan. I guess it's cool if you want to, you know, hunt down some proper lap times, but it uh, doesn't sound too fun to me. You also have this red stripe now going all along, which is in typical Nismo fashion. I kind of like it. The red stripe runs all the way to the back. And if that's not enough to clue you in that this is the top Z, Nismo badges and black painted roof make this variant stand out. I do think that the black roof looks good. I want to I want to see what it looks like on a white car because this comes in white as well. So like the Z performance, the Z Nismo rides on 19 inch wheels. I think the 19 inches, they look pretty good, good in size. Maybe would be interesting to see what they will look like in 20s. I'm sure a lot of people are going to modify their cars to do that. But these are gloss black and 0.5 inches wider. The front wheels are 10 inches wide and the rear are 10.5 inches wide. They're also lighter, even though they're bigger, they're lighter than the ones you have on the Performance. Pretty cool. Interior here, you got brand new seats with the leather and faux suede Recaro seats, manually adjustable only. And this is one detail that I think is totally fine to have manually, manually adjustable seats. Because if you are the main driver of a, a the, your vehicle, which you know, in most cases you are, you're only going to adjust the seats once and that's pretty much it. So I never really mind just having them be manually adjustable because it saves weight and it also saves cost. And this new Nismo Z comes in five different colors. You can have a look at them right here. Read the full article if you want to check them out. But let's jump into Photoshop here and let's have a look at what's going on with this Nismo design. So up top, as you can see, we do have the normal Nissan Z. Down below, we have the brand new Nismo. So a lot of people, when this first came out, me included, said that this grill in the front end looked way too static. I understand that they tried to make a, uh, you know, a connection to the two original 240Z, but the 240Z has a bl uh, chrome bumper that cuts this off something like this and it kind of makes this big piece feel a little smaller so now that you don't you can't really put a chrome bumper on a 2024 model year so when you just have this rectangular intake it looks a little static to me but over time i've seen this in real life i had this for a week as a press car in 20 uh over a year ago now and i really like this design because there's so many cues 
that uh, ties ties it together with the 240Z, if specifically the roof line, which we're going to have a look at in just a second. But having a look at the Nismo here and the new front end, I do really like what they did here. Extended this uh, intake that we have in the front, extended it to the sides, and made it a little bit more stylized in the corners. For example, this angle here, you have the radius up top and this very sharp nose that I think is fantastic for this specific design. It just looks really good. I'm wondering what they did with this chamfer here, because this chamfer dips down pretty far into the front end. And here you can see that they don't we don't have this chamfer anymore because that would intrude on this line. If we dip down this far, it's gonna intrude on this sharp line in the front end. And I actually prefer the Nismo front end in this case simply because we have more of a stylized intake and everything here is completely open. You also have this fin up top or this wing with the Nismo badge on the side looking really good in addition to the uh, corner wings that you have right here adding some more downforce and aerodynamics to the front end of the car looking fantastic however these both look good to me i don't have a problem with the original z i think this looks nice as well and it's it, the front end kind of suits the rest of what's going on in in the design of the z however over in japan they have a specific version of the nissan z that I think is the, the the best looking. Unfortunately, they don't sell it here. Hopefully, maybe they can, Nissan can make a deal with Japan to have that uh, styling be introduced here, and that is this one right here, the Fair Lady Z. Just have a look at this front end. As I talked about when we uh, when we looked at the uh, normal Z, the original 240Z had this chrome uh, bumper in the front end, cutting into and separating these two uh, grills, the top grill and the lower grill. So what they did here, they took even more inspiration from that, and instead of having a chrome uh, bumper or, uh, or a piece in the front end like we have on the original 240Z, which we can't have on a modern car, obviously, they decided to just extend some of the bodywork and have that be the separation between these two pieces. And I think this looks a lot more nimble than uh, the, the Z that we have over here, or the, or the standard Z that has this static feature in the front end. I wish they would take this and bring this over here as well. I also like these wheels better than the ones we have on the uh, US version. Let's have a look at the side view here. There's not a lot of changes you can see here except for some graphic changes from the normal Z up here and then you have the uh, Nismo down below. We do have new wheels. I do I'm not sure which wheels I prefer. I do like the normal Z wheels, but I also like these. These look more race inspired, which is not a bad thing. And then you can see we have all these red graphics, this line that goes at the very bottom, which which is, has been a part of the Z Nismos for a while now. So I'm glad that they brought that back. But the traditional roof line of the Z is still intact. Obviously, it's not something that's gonna change for a Nismo version. And I also like that they added this uh, silver piece into this uh, roof line to just hammer in that this is in fact inspired by the original 240z which had this roof line if you see a, if you you can only you can recognize the 240z just by looking at the silhouette of the car because of this sharp corner up here and this roof line that dips and never really comes back up in the rear end in this case yes we do have an additional um, an added uh, spoiler in the back the bodywork never really comes back up in the rear this is a classic z line and then it just cuts off pretty abruptly in the rear end you can see some changes in the front end with the new grill here how it's kind of sticks in a little bit further than it does on the uh, normal z and you also have this added arrow on the side and also here on the side skirt is brand new for the Nismo as well. Looking at the rear view before we jump in and have a look at the interior. So there's, again, there's not a lot of changes going on in the Nismo except for some graphic features. And I do think that this red line adds something to this design, specifically if you were to have this in white because it's going to contrast really sharply with this red line at the bottom. It kind of plants the car graphically in a nice way. And you also have a new type of uh, diffuser in the rear. This though, became if it got more fluid and a little bit more stylized in the front end, in the rear, it looks like it got more 
static. So they brought the staticness that we have in the normal Z in the front. They kind of implemented that now in the back instead because these corners, as you can see, are a lot sharper than the more rounded feeling that we have on the regular Z performance up here. It looks like the exhaust pipes are actually the exact same ones as we have on the normal Z performance. I'm not so sure about this integration of the, the wing in the rear because you can see that it's now in two different sections because you need the cut line for the trunk right here. And then it comes back a little bit more on, on the right side or on the outside of the trunk while in the normal Z, they cut it off right before the cut line. I think I actually prefer in this case, the normal Z's arrow specifically up top with the wing or, or the spoiler in the rear over the Nissan Z. So let's have a look at the interior here. And as you can see, we do have a manual transmission in the normal Z performance. Fantastic. Thank you. A Nissan for bringing this out from the get go of the Z and not doing what Supra did, just bringing it after a couple of years of production, which is still good. But I wish the Supra came from the start with a manual. And you don't get the manual in the new Z because this comes with a new nine speed automatic transmission. You also see that we do have a brand new steering wheel. We don't have this red piece up top, and this looks like some suede or Alcantara on the sides feels very nice. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same steering wheel. It's just some graphic features that they changed up and some materials. I personally really love this uh, retro blue interior that you can get with the Nissan Z. Definitely bring it back to the uh, late 60s and 70s of the 240Z by having this type of styling in here. The new one still looks good. It looks pretty much the same as the normal Z performance, but you do have these Recaro seats now that you don't have in the uh, regular Z performance. Overall, it's a cool update from uh, Nissan for the Z with the Nismo doing just this type of changes that you want to see in a uh, Nismo. It doesn't have to be over the top. However, I do wish that it still offered the manual transmission in the Nissan Z Nismo because I feel like that is a, definitely a, a buyer's group that are interested in getting the manual transmission. There's a lot of car companies that make uh, just manuals just because because they can say that you have a manual transmission. But hi historically, people of that specific car don't usually buy a manual. So I think that's different here. Because Nissan Z's has always been available with a manual transmission, and, and they've always been very good transmission. I can't wait to see this in real life. And I also can't wait to see just how much this thing is going to cost.